بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وانت خير الفاتحين سبحانك ربنا لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم Respected elders and brothers, children, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather all of us together in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds, forgive our sins, and accept all of us among the people of the Jannah, Allahumma amin. Just before I come here to, uh, to the masjid, I was reading actually a message or a letter on the Da'wa program or Da'wa group, New Zealand Da'wa group. And this is a message sent by a prominent celebrity in India. I will say her name. I'm not sure if it's right or wrong pronunciation. Lata Manjishka, something like that. She said, sending this message from her hospital bed. She said, and actually, this concerned every one of us. She said, the latest and the most expensive cars are parking in my house, in my garage, but I'm still sitting on a wheelchair. My house is as big as a castle, just like a mansion, a castle, but I am sleeping in the small bit in the hospital. I own the most expensive jewelry, the most expensive accessories, the most expensive clothes, but I still wear the garment that they provided by the hospital to me, one single layer garment. I only see the people who never, I never thought that I'm going to see them every day, doctors and nurses, and those people who used to be around me all disappeared. No one comes because I am not of use, of any use to them anymore. Subhanallah. And she said so many other things, but the message is very powerful. The only, the only reality in this life that we have to accept it is this, that one day we have to go. Young or old, black or white, citizen or resident, you know, African, European, New Zealander, whatever, who are, we all have the same destination. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Let them know, O Muhammad, that the death that you are running from it, trying to escape it, فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ The word mulaqat in Arabic, mulaqat means to meet somebody face to face. To meet somebody huh? face to face. This is mulaqat, mulaqi. But the word before it, tafiruna minhu. When you run away from something, you show your back or your face to it. Your back, because you run, and this per this something is running after you. So you run, and this, you know, danger or this risk is running after you. So you show him your back. So what's supposed to be the the ayah says what the ayah supposed to say? That the, the death is going to catch you from behind, right? Because you run from it. But what will happen? You run towards death. That is why Allah said, you're going to come to face it. So we are actually not running from death. We are running towards death. That is why we will find it right in front of our faith. This is death waiting for you. Subhanallah. What is it that make the people hate each other? What is it? that make the people make plans against each other? What is it that make the people make false stories about others, backbite them, slander them? What is it that make the people forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forget their obligations and forget their destination? And they just get indulged in this dunya from tip to toe. They never think about Allah. Once they turn around, they find it too late. Too late to give up whatever they have been doing. I was talking last Friday about losing faith and how people lose Iman very easily, just like that. And people start with one step and they can't stop. It's just like addiction. 
and they find it really very hard. Subhanallah. So brothers, it's not actually, it's not the time to waste. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us so many lessons, but we don't understand the lessons of Allah. Look at all of us now. We cover, we cover our mouth with the mask, right? We cover it. And before we never, we never thought that one day we will have to close our mouth. Allah keep telling us, keep your mouth shut. You're going to be safe. Cover it. You're going to be safe. Don't let it go for your tongue. Don't just go and involve, don't go and poke your nose into other people's affair. Don't just go and bite the, uh, bite, bite the people and talk about them. Keep your mouth shut, you will be safe. And now we ourselves have to put something to cover our mouth. Why? Because we think we're going to be safe. Yes, you're going to be safe, but learn how to keep your tongue inside. You will be safe as well. Subhanallah. Keep distance, social distance. Why? Because the infection is going to come to you. Subhanallah. And we go and hang out skin to skin with those people who harm us. Those people who are driving us to, the, to Jahannam. And we think it's not, it's not possible to stay away from those people. Those are our close friends, best friends. Now we learn how to keep distance and we still survive. We actually do that because we think we're going to be safe. And we believe that we're going to be safe. If we keep distance from anything that we expect to harm from it, then we will, we're going to also be safe. A distance from the steps of shaitan, we're going to be safe. But if we just stick to him, or just be close to him, or anyone who's going to take us to the same destination, we will be ruined. We will be ruined, subhanallah. We learn a lot of things. We learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to send an army, doesn't need to send a, stand, a, a, a storm, or an earthquake, or a volcano to punish the people, or to shut them down. Allah doesn't need that. We think it has to be a big disaster, big calamity. Then people have, this is the only time people will get the lesson. But Allah has sent to them something very, very insignificant. Very tiny, small thing, virus. Teaches the people a lot of lessons. A lot of lessons. And still until today, people are in hustle and bustle just because of this little, tiny, you know, creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it to come in. I don't say Allah sent it, but Allah allowed it to come to our life. So many things we have to learn. The most important thing is to set our priorities right. We have a list of priorities. You know, just like when you leave your home, you have a list of to-do list. I first have to go to work, go to market, go to the supermarket or go somewhere. I have to do one, two, three, four. You have a list. So if you reset your list, your priorities list right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes on the top of your list, your deen, your religion, your iman, your faith comes on the top of your list, then nothing is going to harm you at all. You will go straight, straight to the Jannah. Because this world, wallahi, doesn't worth it. Wallahi, doesn't worth it. Look at yourself today and look at yourself, you know, a few years ago. How much of this time you remember? Tell me how much you can remember out of this 10, 15, 20 years that you can go back with your memory to. Almost nothing. What happened to these days and years? They all gone. They all gone. Look at yourself. Do you recognize your face? If you look at yourself 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you are a different person now. Why? Because this is your life. The life is taken away from you. The health is taken away from you. And one day, maybe me and you are gonna be sitting on a wheelchair, we can't get up. Or lying on a, on a hospital bed, we can't even lift raise our head to drink water. Somebody has to close you. Somebody has to even to take you to the toilet, same like when you were a baby. You couldn't clean yourself. Somebody has to take care of your basic, basic, basic needs. How is it? And what is it that make the people fight each other, ruin their lives, ruin their future, their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just because of something that they think they're going to make them happy. But nothing is going to make you happy if you are disconnected from Allah. Nothing. Wallahi, nothing is going to make you happy at all. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُونَ Allah said in Surah Yunus, بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ 
by being in the in the grace of Allah, in the mercy of Allah, connected to Allah and His Rahmah, you must be happy. If you got a share from this, then you have to be happy. You have the right to be happy and cheerful. is way better than whatever you people can collect. Whatever. And you will never realize how important is deen in your your deen, uh, deen is, is, is in your life unless you actually call for it. You can't understand how is it important for you, your deen, your iman, until you call for it. And most of us are so busy. We never think of calling other people to iman, to deen, to faith, go for da'wah. We don't think of it. We don't take it seriously. Well, this is actually to let you know and to encourage you and myself in the first place to take part in anything, any program that will motivate us to take part in the da'wah, in the work of for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the most uh, expert person in math is the math teacher, right? I guess the most beautiful or the most experienced driver is the taxi driver or in a truck driver, the one who drives. The one who does the profession itself become more the most expert in it, right? Because he does it every day, every day. Similarly, if you practice da'wah, if you practice deen, every day you're going to be expert in deen. You're going to be expert in iman. But if you just leave it, you don't take care of it, you're going to be actually far away from it. So there is actually a very important program taking place in Kilberni Masjid this coming Saturday and Sunday, which we call it, they call it da'wah clinic. It's a program for, organized by AIRIA, which is a da'wah, international da'wah organization to teach me and you and everyone who is interested how to pass on the message of Islam to other people, to your children, to your wife, to your family members, to your friends, to your neighbors. How to be yourself confident that you are on the right path. So if you have time, Saturday, Sunday, take part, register, and be in to win. To win, inshallah, a place with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all his companions in the Jannah. Allahumma amin. Last Sunday, I was talking about Surah Al-Hujurat, one of the most beautiful surahs that you can ever read in the Quran. Do you know what surah comes before Surah Al-Hujurat? Surah Al-Fatih. And what is before Surah Al-Fatih? Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us how to respect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and how to behave with him. Surah Al-Fatih is how to work together as a community. Community doesn't mean the whole entire world, it must a group of people who live together and share life together. Locality, you know, people of the same city. And Surah Al-Hujurat is to teach us the etiquette when we talk to each other, when we deal with each other. Starting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as the head of the community, in his life and after his death and following by how to behave with each other as individual and as groups. And I have actually went to throw this, the first, uh, you know, few ayahs of this, of this surah, but I lost actually some few points. I would like to highlight them very carefully. When somebody comes to you and say, hey brother, you shouldn't do that. There is a hadith that says this is haram or this is prohibited. Ah, oh, brother, I don't think it's a, it's an authentic, I, mean, I don't think it's so correct. Maybe you misunderstood it and you start kind of, you know, arguing. Watch out. This is really very dangerous. You know why? Because the moment you open your mouth to challenge the hadith of Rasulullah sallam, you are actually raising your voice above the voice of Rasulullah sallam. If you're not sure, just keep quiet and say, okay, I think the scholars have to, to talk about it. I will ask somebody about it, if it's right or wrong. But don't just go from the first place and challenge it and argue against or deny it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you raise your voice, if you put yourself ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or his hadith, because he is not with us now, but his sunnah, his hadith, his words are there. If you put yourself ahead of that, you know what will happen? What does ahbat ahbat a'malukum become nothing? They just got destroyed and ruined. Allah is talking in this ayat to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, to al-Muhajireen, to al-Ansar, to the great, great companions. They said, you guys, if you raise your voice, Allah will nullify and demolish all of your good deeds. So be careful. Because sometimes we come to the brother and say, look, brother, wallahi, you shouldn't have this kind of t-shirt. You shouldn't cut this kind of, 
you shouldn't have this hair cut because Rasulullah said that. You shouldn't have your panties so long like that. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have, because the hadith says, oh no, I don't think, brother, it's like outdated information. I don't think it's very serious. I don't think it's as you think. Okay, fine. Wait a moment. Be conscious. Now, you raised your voice above the voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you take it that way, then Allah knows maybe your whole good deeds will be cancelled, will be nullified. The second thing I missed out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is always with you. He's not with, he, he doesn't, he's, he's not with us, you know, uh, in person, but he is with us, with his teaching, with his sunnah, with his legacy. What does it mean? We have to learn it. We have to look for it. We have to search it. We have to find out what does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he used to do when he go to sleep? How did he eat? How did he sit down? How did he stand up? How did he talk? How did he shake hands? How did he give salam? We have to learn that. Just to get to feel that Rasulullah is just with us. He will ask nowadays when it is said, it is sunnah. Oh, it is sunnah. Okay, fine. I got it. What did you get? Oh, yeah, just sunnah, brother. You know, I don't have to do it. Really? Yes, I don't have to do it. If it's not first obligation, okay, fine. I have the option. I can do it or I can't do it. Leave it. Subhanallah. You don't want Rasulullah to be with you. Because how he is going to be with you if you don't apply his sunnah, if you don't have his sunnah in your life. How he is going to be with you? And his sunnah is not just how to appear, how to look like. It is also how to behave, how to be a husband, how to be a father, how to be a mother, how to be a, 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 a sibling, how to be a brother, how to be a member in a community. You're going to learn all of that from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you're going to learn all of that from him. Subhan wa'alamu anna fikum Rasulullah law yuti'ukum fi kathirin min al-amri la'anittum. If you want Rasulullah to follow you, if you want him to obey you, then you will be in a lot of trouble. The fact that you want the deen to go with you, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. It's not the way we think. Said, oh, Wallahi man, I, I wish this deen actually allow us to, to have girlfriends. I don't know why it doesn't haram in Islam. Uh, do you think it's going to be a good thing if you have it? I don't know why this Islam, you know, Islam prohibit us from drinking alcohol. It's very tempting when we go on the aisles and we see these bottles and, you know, offers. You know, why we don't try it? It's okay. And people eat it and drink it and nothing happened to them. They are actually more smarter than us. Subhanallah. People think that way. You know? They think that if Islam goes along with what they want, things will be good. Life will be better. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if Rasulullah sallam go with you, if the deen goes, he goes with you, you will be in a lot of trouble. Not the other way around. You better actually stick to the deen. You better follow the deen, even if it goes against what you wish. If it goes against what you desire. If it goes against what you want. You know, in one situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the believers a very important lesson about this particular thing. In Ghazwat Uhud, the battle of Uhud, Rasulullah gathered the people and he said, look guys, the Meccan people are coming after us. They come in a, an army of 3,000 people, fully armed, heavily armed, and they want to come and take revenge because we defeated them one year ago in the Battle of Battle. And you know, they got defeated and it was very shameful because they were the leaders of the, of the region, the most, the superpower of this region. So they got defeated from us, now they come for a revenge and they will not let it go what you're gonna do he asked the people okay, what do you think guys what you're gonna do some people said ya rasulallah we better just stay in medina and defend it you know use the strategy the strategy of self-defense some other guys said no rasulallah we have to go out and fight them outside medina who said that young people you know very enthusiastic very energetic, they said, yeah, let's go for a fight. Let's go for a battle. We're going to show them how hard we are. Okay. Rasulullah asked the majority of the people, they said, okay, fine, let's go out. He didn't want to go out. And what happened when he followed their opinion? The battle didn't go, the well, didn't go well, and he was almost about to be killed, and things happened, and, you know, the battle was not successful. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the Muslims, 
And he said, وَلَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ تَمَنَّوْنَ الْمَوْتَ In Surah Al-Imran, talking about, فَقَدْ رَأَيْتُمُوهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظِرُونَ you, were, you people were so excited and said, Yeah, we want to die as martyrs. We want to be shaheed. We want to be shaheed. Once you come face to face with the enemy, you start running away. What happened? إِذْ تُسْعُدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ some people run from the battlefield three kilometers, they never turn it back. They never turn it three kilometers running, they never turn it and see what, what is happening. SubhanAllah. They were so, some of them were so scared. They just ran away. So Allah said, why did you wish for this? You could have been saved from this trouble if you follow the opinion of Rasulullah Well, it was a plan by Allah to teach them that in the end, Allah's, Allah and His Messenger must take that first priority. Even if you think you have a smarter idea or a better idea, Allah and His Messenger comes number one because they know what you people don't know. SubhanAllah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved to talk about very important things in this surah as a community. He put this aside and He said, Look, now you know how to deal with Rasulullah. You should respect yourself. The utmost respect to Rasulullah. The utmost respect. We don't talk to Him just like, you know, buddy or a mate. We don't even mention his name as Muhammad. You see, even his family member, who used to be like his wife, his wife. You know, what, what, what your wife, uh, t how, how she calls you? Don't tell anyone, TV secret. <laughs> Loser, <laughs> come here. <laughs> so, they, after, after this ayah revealed, none of them could say to him just his name. They used to say, Ya Rasulullah. His uncles, uncles, you know, used to look at him when he was baby. You know, feed him, close him. They said, Ya Rasulullah. They didn't even dare to raise their head and look at his face. Amr ibn al-As said, the most beloved one on earth to me was Rasulullah. But if you ask me to describe his face, I can't. Because I couldn't actually stare at his face. I couldn't get the courage to look at his face. I might offend him with my eyes. You know, I send a lot of messages, a lot of messages. The eye language, the body language, even the tongue, sarcastic language. Okay, tell me, Mr. Smarter, you know? Okay, yeah, I think you know it, Mr. Genius. Okay, do you mean genius? No, you mean stupid. <laughs> but you just say it that way, you stress the last letter because you want to tell him that you are sarcastic. Similarly, you send an eye, a look, that give a lot of messages. So he said, I will never, and be able to describe him because I couldn't look at his face, subhanAllah, out of extreme respect. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa brothers, is the most important human being in our life. And every single salah, every single salah, we send salam to him. As-salamu alayka ayyuha al-nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't we say that every salah? Yes. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi as-salahi. And then you continue, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun muyin. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun muyin. His name is actually a very beautiful name. This word is the most beautiful name you can ever think of as a name. But even calling his name without title is an offense to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why Every single day the Adhan goes, Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. The most important thing about this man is he is Rasulullah. He has the authority to speak on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? So disturbing him or using his name or just going over him or running out over his words are a big crime that can lead to the destruction of all the good deeds, no matter how great are these good deeds. See, Rasulullah told us, none of us will be accepted none of you is going to be successful until what you desire should be exactly what I desire. Subhanallah. If Rasulullah wanted that way, you should follow him. Your own desires, your own whims or dreams must go alongside by side or must, must match what Rasulullah commands us to go. If you have this conflict, then you have to fix it. There is a problem. Subhanallah. 
If you do something, you are unwilling to do it, but because you have been forced to do it, but you don't feel like to do it, there is a problem, you have to fix it. You have to fix it. Because this is a big, the start signing of nifaq. The munafiqun, hypocrites, Allah talk about them, they get up for Fajr Salah, and they stand in the front line. Okay? Back then, I'm not talking about the front line here, okay? Because some people might not come to Fajr. Sheikh said the munafiqun come to Fajr Salah. <laughs> and they stand in the front line. In the Lahu, in the I'm talking about those guys, no? Back in the time. They were standing in the front line, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us something that was going inside them. Nobody knew about it. What that? وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا وسهلة. They get up for the salah, but they are so lazy. They are pushing themselves out. You الناس. But they have to go because people are going to talk about them. Oh, where is so-and-so? I haven't seen him in the masjid. What people are going to say if I am missing from the Fajr Salah today? Now people will start thinking bad about me. I better go. Why? Because people are going to think bad about me. Uh, so what about if people don't think bad about you? Okay, friend, that is time to relax. What about Allah? If you think bad about you, it's okay, man. Allah ghafur rahim the most important thing, people don't think bad. What the people are going to say about me? Forget about people, man. Think about Allah. If what you desire goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, there is a problem. You have to fix it. There is a problem. One day there was a dispute between two companions and they went to Rasulullah sallallahu Actually, was a companion and a Jewish community member. They went to Rasulullah sallallahu and the Rasulullah sallallahu sorted out the problem and he actually said, the Jewish guy has the right. And you Muslim man, you are wrong. You are guilty. He wasn't happy with that. He said, how come you Rasulullah? You know, I'm a Muslim and he's... Uh, look, justice is justice. You are guilty and he is innocent. And he wasn't happy with that. And he went to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said, did you hear what happened? No, I didn't hear it. What is it? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And he told him the whole story. Really? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that? He said, yes, wallah, I don't know what happened. Wait a second. He went inside, he grabbed his sword. And he said, if you are not happy with what Rasulullah sallallahu said, I'm going to split you in two halves with my sword. He said, I'm happy, alhamdulillah. Okay, get out. Get out of my face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Surah Al-Nisa, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Oh Muhammad, I take an oath by your Lord. Allah is talking. I swear by Allah. Allah Himself is swearing by Himself. لا يؤمنون. They will never have iman. حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينه. Until they set you up as a judge between any dispute between them. If they have any dispute, the main judge for us is Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. The book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Because when there is a dispute and say, brother, listen, what Allah said, you said, brother, I don't care about it now. We just it's a, it's a, it's a family matter. Listen to me, this, hey, come on. I said what Allah said and you, you won't shut me down. Just, you don't want to listen to Allah. Not only that, okay, fine, I got it. Ah, yeah. Okay, if you're not happy, listen. They don't feel any kind of discomfort inside them. If they feel discomfort because what Allah said doesn't go again, doesn't go along with their desire, وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And they submit totally and completely. No resilience. They are 100% contented with what you said. Subhanallah. If they still have an issue to accept what Rasulullah said, there is a big problem that they have to fix it. And to be honest, this is something we have to check on it. Because I believe that we have some issues. We have to work with it. Sometimes we, we listen to what Allah said and what Rasulullah said. And we just pretend that we are happy with it. Okay, we accept it, fine. But deep inside, we have some itchiness. We have a feeling of discomfort. There is a problem sitting there. We have to fix it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved from the rights of Rasulullah to the right of the community. And he said, There is heaps of messages in this, in this ayah. The first message Allah said, people are fighting each other. Two group of Muslims are fighting each other, right? Two Muslim communities are fighting each other. Two masjid jama'at are fighting each other, right? You know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Minal mu'mineen. So Allah said, those people are believers. Uh, what, what does it mean? 
you have no authority to judge their, their people iman you know brother the other group the other masjid people they, wallahi they are munafiqun wallahi wallahi ma, did you cut open their heart and find out nifaq sitting there i know wallahi brother i know if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself that they are believers mu'minun they still fighting each other and he said they're still believers because allah knows what is inside their heart so what is my role here look you must be neutral you can't be a judge between make salt if you are biased. If you are on, on one side against the other side, you can't make salt. You can't make reconciliation. Why? Because you will definitely favor the people that you favor. You're not going to go against yourself. You see? And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasulullah said, He said, Sadiquka man sadaqaka laysa man sadaqak. Sadiquka man sadaqaka laysa man sadaqak. What does it mean? Sadiquk, your honest friend, your true friend is the one who tell you the truth, not the one who agree with you. You know, he comes to you and say, yeah man, this, this guy is a lost case. Yeah man, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm going to punch him in the face. Yes man, I'm coming with you. I'm going to just crack his head. Yeah, I'm done. Everything you say, yes man, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. And you think, oh, you are my best friend. You are my, my, my buddy. No, actually, he's the biggest enemy to you. Because if he's really true, your, your best friend is going to say, Hey, hold on. That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. You're not my friend. No, I am your friend. That's why I'm giving you the right advice. Because he said, It's al mu'minu mir'atu akhir. Whatever you see in the mirror is yourself. It's not a Photoshop. <laughs> you, can, you can accuse anything as a Photoshop except your mirror. Okay? Who is this handsome guy? It's, not <laughs> it's you anyway. <laughs> Well, whoever is there in the mirror is yourself. You see? See? Subhanallah, there was a lady, you know, went to the to buy a new phone, the new edition of the iPhone. And she set up the iPhone with the new phone in the shop. And she put a security, some kind of security, unlocked the screen with the face recognition. She went back home and she had a shower. She tried the face recognition. It didn't work. <laughs> she looked hard, tried many times. It didn't work. Why? Because... When she was out, she was a completely different person. You know, silicon and botics and everything. Now she's the real person. You know, she didn't work. So people see in their mirror themselves. You should see in your friend yourself. He will tell you what is right is right. Black is black and white is white. He doesn't tell you what you want to hear. He tell you what is the truth. When they fight each other, the other thing is in this message, Allah said, اقتتلوا. and the word اقتتلوا, they kill themselves. They kill themselves. So fighting somebody, you suppose like A fight B, then A kill B, or you know, damage or hurt B. But Allah said, no, what is actually happening is A hurting himself and B is hurting himself. Those actually are killing themselves. Well, because the believers are just like one body. Have you seen somebody fighting his, you know, his right hand is fighting his arm and I'm going to cut you. And then that's nonsense. That is stupid. If somebody is cutting his own hand because this hand doesn't like this hand. He's, he's, he's a crazy person, right? So two believers are fighting each other. Two group of believers that are actually damaging themselves. They are killing themselves. No winner. They both of them losers. Both of them losers because whatever her harm they do to each other, they are actually harming themselves. Allah also said, pointed out in this ayah, it's, it's quite, you know, lengthy discussion about this ayah, but he said, when there is sulh between two fighting groups, reconciliation, keep it within your service. Don't let the whole entire world know about it and don't send don't send the you know don't send the messages out there because what will happen people will add their own flavors people add their own flavors you see because the story go from one person to the other person it it keep you know building up building up building up and then it starts you know becoming a becoming a you know a, a story you know a movie it turns into a big movie you know, they were teaching the group of students in, in the media college. They gathered 40 people, 40 students, and they sit them together one next to each other. And they asked the first one, listen carefully, 40 people, 40 students sitting next, next to each other. 
right? And the first one, the teacher said in his ear, I will say you, I will tell you one sentence, and you whisper with this sentence into the ear of the one next to you. So I will say to you secretly, right? What did he say to him? He said, Jack pushed John and he fell down. Jack pushed John and he fell down. And he whispered to the next, and the next whispered to the next, and the whispered to the next. They come to the last one, number 40, and they asked him, what did he say to you? He said, Jack pushed John and he hit him with his hand and he cut his, his arm and they went to the court and they, he smashed him with his car. What happened? Because everyone added 10% from his own geniusness. And 1% multiplied by 40, that is like 40%. Like see, the story goes on and on and on and on, subhanAllah. You see? The brother come and say, Assalamu. he didn't say assalamu, he didn't see you. Then the brother talked to his friend. Did you see what he said, what he did? He didn't say salam to me because he hates me. Yeah, brother, yeah, he hates you. I know he hates you. And then the brother take this and he goes the other. You know what I said? Brother Abdi was to, where is brother Abdi? <laughs> <laughs> he was standing in the front of Masjid and brother Abdi, Abdi, uh, brother Ahmad didn't give salam to him. I know they are because they didn't like him because he hates him. You know what happened with him and his wife? And and they involve his wife and his children. And then in the end, it goes to the community like Brother Abdi is taking Brother Ahmed to the court because they have a fight in each other. And the problem was, he didn't see him and he didn't say Salaam Alaikum. That is the whole story. But it when went out to the, to the social media, it become like they are now in the courthouse and they are about to kill each other. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Be honest. Say what you have to say or keep quiet. All the problems in the Muslim community, all these fights happen because people just add their own flavor. They put their own touch and they report it to the world. They don't get in tight behind the closed door and fix it. We're supposed to do it in privacy to keep ourselves quiet. Most of the problem in the Muslim communities go to the media before even the, the people of the problem know about it. <laughs> it's out in the media. Somebody just grab it. Tara biha shaytan al aqab as Rasulullah sallallahu said. You know, when he was making a treaty between him and the Ansar, the first group of Ansar came to Mecca to accept Islam. They were making the treaty. You know, the, we, uh, they said, We are Rasulullah, we accept Islam. You come to us in Medina and we all become Muslim. So what happened? One shaytan, subhanAllah, was present. A, a real shaytan. He went out and he went to the Meccan people and they screamed, Get up, guys! There is a big, 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 a big, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy happening against you. Muhammad and his, you know, people, he recruiting people from outside Medina to kill you, from outside Mecca to kill you. And he made them. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said, I mean, nothing happened yet. But he went out to spread the news and make a big drama out of it. So if you can't make sulh or, you know, part of the sulh and reconciliation, your role here is to keep quiet. Don't transfer the information or spread the word. Rasulullah Rasulullah said, Inna Allah kariha lakum. Allah doesn't like qila wa qal. What is qila wa qal? Is you hear something, you go and tell it to somebody else. And because I hear it. It doesn't mean that you have to go and tell it somebody. You see? Qila wa qal. Somebody said, you know what he said? Oh. And then you start reporting it to somebody else. No. No, don't do that. Hear it, don't believe it. Just leave it, ignore it. It will just die out. Or if you are gonna be part of it, Allah will put you in this scenario. If Allah doesn't want you in this scenario, khalas. He will just like leave you alone. SubhanAllah. I'm running out of time. The last bit I would like to share with you about this ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً He said in another surah, another surah, Surah Al-Ali Imran, وَكُنْتُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا One ayah says إِخْوَان and one ayah says إِخْوَة إِخْوَان and إِخْوَة Translation in both brothers but that's wrong إِخْوَان mean brothers like me and you are brothers but Allah didn't say believers are brothers He said sibling brothers إِخْوَة means siblings from the same father from the same mother what does it mean you have blood relationship the believer is not just somebody that connected to you. He is actually your real brother, your sibling. 
So you should treat him as your own sibling. He is part of you and you are part of him. The blood runs in your vein is the same blood that runs in his vein. Just because you share Iman together, then you become connected just like sibling. Be in the business of making peace among them. Don't be in the business of adding fuel on the fire. Some people have this hobby. What they're looking for is to create a big drama, a big fight. And they feel so happy when they follow on the social media. Hey, now the fight has started. Let's sit down and relax and watch them killing each other. And you see, subhanAllah, people enjoy when, you know, they just start the fight and they keep watching. You know, and so excited. Oh, yeah, he got him. He got them. Subhanallah. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ He said, if you don't conscious, be conscious of Allah, if you don't actually do that, Allah, the rahmah will be lifted up, will take taken away from you. One condition is for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come, for Allah's mercy, is we have to deal with each other as brothers, sibling brothers. We have to make peace. Don't let the problems grow and they become monsters that eat us and damage us. We should put an end to these troubles and these fights and these disputes and get together as ikhwah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, sibling brothers. And indeed Allah will give mercy to you. If not, Allah will take the mercy away. I think it's my time now to stop, inshallah. And we will follow that by the dinner, inshallah, and Isha salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you abundantly for your time and effort. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collect all of us in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al-firdaus ala Allahumma ameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adab anna. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta al-sami'u al-alim wa tuba'alina inna ka anta al-tawabu rahim. Allahumma aghfir wa rahamu wa tajawaz amma ta'alam inna ka anta al-azzu al-akram. Rabbana atina nufusina taqwaha wa zakkiha anta man zakkiha khayru man zakkiha anta waliyuhu wa mawlaha ya arhamu al-rahimin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka rilaka wal jannah wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar. Rabbana amanna bima anzalta wa attaba'ana al-rasoola faktubna ma'a al-shahidin. La ilahe illa anta subhanak inna kunna min al-zalimin. Subhana rabbika رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خيرا